WKYT News. Now on mid-morning, what we know about an early morning house fire in Southern Kentucky. Plus, an arrest and a Lexington shooting. How investigators say the victim and suspect knew each other. And recognizing women in leadership, the Kentucky Chamber is kicking off a summit in Lexington. Thanks for joining us on Mid-Morning. I'm Victor Puente. And I'm Destiny Quinn. It is a first alert weather day. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking that severe threat for us. Jim, when do you expect things to start picking up? I think once we cross uh, the midday point and get into the afternoon, especially into the evening hours, that's going to be the targeted time for a lot of these storms to develop. We had some rounds of rain out there, very beneficial rounds of rain this morning. And now we're kind of moving right along here into the uh, mid-morning time frame. We're already deep in the 70s and even a few 80s that are out there as well. What you're going to see is more development out to our west, probably getting a, somewhat of a line that tries to develop and you'll get some more activity that will start lifting in after that. And that could trigger some of that severe weather concern as we move on. So as we look at the forecast breakdown, today is a first alert weather day. Damaging winds and hail are your primary threats out of this. It's all driven in here by a cold front. Once that front goes through, you have a really nice day tomorrow. Temperatures are down, the humidity is down, but that doesn't hold because you get into Friday and we're already back with the humidity and a little more heat as the numbers start coming up. And that could lead to maybe a heat index back into the 90s. I'll take a closer look at that coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Jim. This is new on mid morning. Pulaski County crews work to put out an early morning house fire. It happened at a mobile home on Hack Road in Somerset. When firefighters arrived, they saw black smoke coming from the home. They say it came from the laundry room. They were able to put it out quickly. The family inside was able to make it out. They say no one was hurt. We're learning more about a Lexington shooting suspect. Police say Demetrius Maxberry shot a woman yesterday near the intersection of Winchester and Liberty Roads. According to his arrest citation, Max Berry was seen on video shooting into a car. Other people in the car told investigators the woman is Max Berry's former girlfriend and mother of his child. She is expected to be OK. People in the area say gun violence is common. One neighbor pulled over to tell us about his frustrations. The reality is it's too convenient or too too often. And sadly, we're faced and the police are as well with such consistent danger. Max Berry is charged with assault, wanton endangerment, and possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. First responders are talking about handling mental health crises. This week, Lexington crews responded to an armed man who was on the Bryan Station overpass. They say he needed help and ended up shooting himself. He's still in the hospital. The Lexington Fire Department says paramedics go to mental health calls the police department says almost all of their officers have done crisis intervention training. De escalation is the it's the big word. It's anytime we get on scene, we need to get people down to a level where we can actually have a conversation with them. So if we get somewhere and they're amped up, then our first goal is we're going to try to get them to come back down. Lexington got an eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar grant in January to establish a crisis response team. Money will help hire a full time mental health professional to work with the police department. If you or someone you know needs help, call or text the crisis hotline at 988. Happening now, the Kentucky Chamber is holding a summit in Lexington to recognize women in business. The gathering's being held at Central Bank Center. Speakers include Woodford Reserve Master Distiller Elizabeth McCall and Jeff Ruby CEO Brittany Ruby Miller. The agenda includes a luncheon and talks on leadership. The event ends at four. Members of the Kentucky Anti-Semitism Task Force are trying to combat discrimination through education. The task force says less than 0.04% of Kentucky's population is Jewish. They say although Holocaust education is required in Kentucky middle and high schools, many students can't give accurate facts about it. The task force wants to put together a team of leaders in teaching so Jewish narratives can be better taught in schools. A team would attend a three day intensive orientation, go to seminars twice a month and design lesson plans surrounding Holocaust education. The Bluegrass Army Depot is giving an update in Richmond today. Leaders with the depot will talk about current activities, studies and research items for the future of the plant. The event is open to anyone. It starts at 530 at the Madison County Joint Information Center. The Laurel County Drug Task Force brought down a large drug trafficking organization. The sheriff's office says the organization was across several states. 
supplied large amounts of meth to Laurel and Clay counties. Three people were charged in that investigation. Vernon Delph from London, Jay Boykin from Georgia, and Karanda Tillman of Tennessee. Officers expect to make more arrests. A former employee of the Somerset Pulaski Economic Development Foundation was sentenced to federal prison. The Herald Leader reports Lisa Gadbury admitted to spending $142,000 from her former agency for personal expenses. She's also ordered to pay more than $142,000 in restitution. She was sentenced to 10 months in prison. A judge sentenced a Kentucky man to a year in prison for committing a federal hate crime. Court records say 24-year-old Brian Adams from Paintsville sent a threat to a Louisiana fifth grade Zoom class in October of 2020. Adams used racial slurs against the students and teachers. He pleaded guilty to one count of threatening communications. Groups in Winchester are hosting the Central Kentucky Veterans Day of Valor. That event will feature more than 30 vendors offering services for veterans and their families. The Vet Center mobile unit and a blood drive by the American Red Cross will be there. Service officers will be available to help with claims and provide information on the PACT Act and other veteran resources. That event is Friday at George Rogers Clark High School. That will be from 10 to 3. About 30 youth campers are fishing right now at Jacobson Park in Lexington. It's part of an event put on by Camp Hero Kentucky. That event lasts until 1. The Alzheimer's Association is working to raise awareness for the disease. The Greater Kentucky and Southern Indiana chapter hosted the Lexington Walk to End Alzheimer's kickoff yesterday. There, people learned how to connect with other people who are passionate about ending the disease. Our walks are like a big support group. They're, you know, our families come out and it's just so nice for them to know that they're not alone in this fight to the, for the disease, um, that there are other families, there are other corporate partners that are, you know, within this fight with them and supporting them in this cause. The Lexington Walk to End Alzheimer's event will be at Kentucky Horse Park on October 20th. Coming up on WKYT Mid-Morning, half a million trucks recalled. The transmission problem could make some more Fords more likely to crash. Potential for severe weather is out there as we move.